this goes to any of you guys. How's it feel to be two and one, guys? Feels great. Love it. Doesn't feel better. Best best part about being two and one is we can be three and one. There you go. Uh, Marcus, we talked a little bit the first game about the depth of the wide receiver core. With Quinton out, uh, can you talk a little bit, bit about that next guy up mentality? Uh, yeah, I think we had two players out. We had Voss, Guez, and, and, and Q. And, and I think Devin proved this game that we have the depth and that we could trust anybody behind anybody. So I think him having a great game puts a lot of trust into the offense and the receivers. Um, no matter who's in the game, they don't have to worry about changing up the offense because someone's down. Paul, a little bit about that uh, big run. I mean, offense needed a spark. You guys were backed up. And you guys talk about that just breaking loose. Um, I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be able to do it without this guy and in the line. So I give them all the praise for um, springing me free. Marcus, uh, 465 yards. After uh, facing the number one team in the country, one of the best defenses in the country, can you talk a little bit about how, how good that feels to get 465 yards? Uh, I think, again, it's, it's, it's about building the trust with the team. I think after the last game, they didn't really trust the offense enough because we didn't produce enough. And, and we didn't really, I mean, going in that, after that game, it was, it's, it's hard to believe in yourself. Um, so I think this game is big on that. It's big on, on believing in our ability to, to produce as an offense. And I think it's, it's a good way to, to go into a game like Wisconsin where we need to produce a lot um, to get that W. Seemed to be a big difference between the first half on offense and the second half on offense. Do the coaches say anything to you guys, or is it just an adjustment kind of a thing? What happened in there? Coach Bailey just told us to execute, basically. I mean. Nothing, nothing that the other team did wasn't anything we didn't practice. I mean, we showed up and we just had to execute. And I think in the second half, especially, we, got, we executed a lot more than we did in the first half. And that's, that's what sprung us. Uh, Devin, this one's for you. Um, you know, you had 108 yards tonight and a touchdown. What was it like to have this type of breakout performance, especially after coming off an injury from last season? I mean, it's, it's, it's huge. I haven't. I haven't played for a year. I've been injured, you know, and the big man upstairs, he gave me an opportunity tonight. I had an opportunity against Ohio State, and uh, we, didn't, we didn't get anything going against Ohio State, and the big thing coming into this week was just to execute. Coach Bailey kept harping on us to execute, and I think as a unit, as an offense, we executed, and we moved the ball, made first downs, and we got the victory tonight. I mean, it's always difficult to to not think about their rankings and, and their record and things like that. But I think, I think, as coming off a bad game from the offense, I think we were more focused on ourselves and getting better ourselves. So it wasn't too difficult this game because we were more worried about getting ourselves going in the game than than what they were doing too much. Paul, uh, not sure if it's been mentioned to you, but your 95-yard run, the longest rushing play in UH history. What does that mean to you? No, uh, this is new to me. Um, it feels great. I mean, uh, <laughs> they they did their job, and I just did, I follow I followed up on them. So I get, that accolade goes to them. <laughs> Hell yeah.